Hi and welcome to the first installment of uh, a video about graph transformations for all of the graphs or a lot, a lot of the graphs that you'll see in Year 12 methods. If you're watching this video you're going to get a, a bit of a summary of, of how transformations work and then some various um, examples of the different types um, ending with um, the multiple transformations for the different types of graphs. So uh, stay tuned and hopefully you'll uh, learn a bit along the way. Um, you can refer to the notes that you've got um, in the handout that we gave you um, but all of the notes are here. Now sometimes the notes didn't quite come out as we wanted them to. Um, this video hopefully will uh, clear that up for you. So um, th basically the way I'm going to, to do this is I'm, I'm going to look at this standard form over here of a, of a graph. Now as you can see it can be to the power of anything. In fact this will also work for sine and cos graphs, um, you know, tan graphs as well. It's just you know they'll, they'll look a little bit different um, but the basic principles are exactly the same. So we've got um, our function of x and x is our um, independent variable and then we've got all these uh, you know, our values here that we can change. Um, so a, b, h and k. You might have seen it with different values it, it makes no difference. Um, and also note, I guess the n can be either negative or positive, um, a whole number or a fraction. So the transformations that can occur are dilations, reflections and translations. Um, now just a little side note over here, uh, when we're stating the transformations that are, have occurred on, on a graph, we always start with um, the dilations. Then after that um, become the reflections and, and translation. And tran that should say translations. Um, it doesn't re sometimes it doesn't matter really the reflections and translations. It really sort of depends on on how you do your working. But um, the dilations must be applied uh, first because they dilate from an axis. Um, unless you're told otherwise, um, you should always dilate um, first. When when we're drawing them, um, it it doesn't matter as much. But when we're stating the transformations, um, you certainly have to have to do those. So let me just give you a quick rundown of um, the, the different variables and what they affect, um, remembering that we're always looking at this uh, basic one here. So A, the number at the front, affects um, the, a, a dilation. Um, it's either you know, stre stretched or compressed um, towards uh, the x-axis or away from the x-axis. And it can also um, uh, flip the graph as well or mirror image the graph um, up and down. B affects, um, B is the number inside the bracket, Always so A is the number outside the bracket, B is the number inside the bracket, um, there. So B um, affects, again, the a dilation, but this time it's from the y-axis, so it stretches or compresses from the y-axis, and it also um, mirror images the graph, um, or you know, reflects the graph, <coughs> excuse me, on, on the y, from the y-axis as well. Um, now we look at H and K, um, so H, um, the number in the bracket, this one um, affects the, the translations and it can move the, the whole graph um, left and right. Um, and K uh, finally um, moves the whole graph either up or down and translates. Okay, so now we're just going to have a look at dilations. Um, the, the two things that are affected are A and B. Um, I'm, I'm going to have a look at A first. Now, I'm not sure this quite came through in your notes, but um, this if you have this, y equals a multiplied by um, x to the power of n, um, the language that we use for this is that, you know, that it's been dilated by a factor of a from the x-axis. Um, it can also be written as dilated by a factor of a parallel to the y-axis, but in exams you'll most commonly f um, see the language of you know from the x-axis. Sometimes the textbook uses in the y direction. That's rubbish. Um, get rid of that. It, you know, I've never seen it in any um, exam, and it, it just becomes really confusing as well. So from the x-axis or um, parallel to the y-axis. Okay, now we're not really concerned whether A is positive or negative at this point. We're just concerned with how big A is, um, you know, it, whether it's between 0 and 1 or whether it's greater than 1. So these signs here, hopefully you've seen this, this sort of thing before. That's, um, you know, the modulus or the absolute function. It just basically just makes the, the, the whole value positive. So it ignores whether it's a negative number or not. Um, you can ask your teacher a little bit more if you want to know about that. Um, or you can just Google it yourself actually. So if, if the um, value of A is less than 1, then the graph is compressed towards the x-axis and therefore looks fatter. Not necessarily a technical term, but that's kind of what happens. 
We'll have a look at some examples in a second. If A is bigger than 1, the graph is stretched from the x-axis and therefore looks skinnier. Again, not technical language, but it's usually helpful. So, uh, the absolute value of A ignores whether it's positive or negative, as I sort of mentioned before. So, the first example, y equals um, 1 on 3 uh, multiplied by x cubed, so just a, a cubic graph. I'm going to start filling in some of these things here, and I'll do it in a fairly distinctive colour. I might do it in blue, because most of the writing's in red. So, a is a third, and the language we use for, for this is that it's been dilated by a factor of 1 on 3, okay, or a third, from the x axis. Each y value is multiplied by a third, making it closer to the x-axis. And you can see that there, the dotted line is the original graph and the, the solid black line is uh, the, the, the new graph. So each, this point here, has been multiplied down, uh, sorry, multiplied by a third, which has you know, become smaller. Every individual point along has uh, become a little bit smaller so that we get the same basic shape but it's just a, a little bit um, uh, fatter, if you like, to use that kind of terminology. Okay, the second example, um, we've got a hyperbola, 4 over x. So in this case, a is actually 4. Okay, in, in this case, you know, it might actually be written as y equals um, a over b x minus h plus k. Okay, so this one has been dilated by a factor of 4. Again, from the x-axis, so each y-value is multiplied by 4, making it further from the x-axis. So this value here has been multiplied by 4, so now it's up there. This value here has been multiplied by 4, now it's up there, uh, further from the x-axis there. Now, the, the, the interesting thing with hyperboles is they can actually be, uh, you know, no matter what, which way they're dilated, they, cannot, they can sort of look the same, um, whether they are being dilated from the x-axis to the y-axis, and we might have a look at that a little bit later, but for this case, um, for this graph here, it's been dilated by a factor of 4 from the x-axis. Um, again, the black line being the new line, the dotted line being the old line. Grab your, your case calculator out and have a play around with it yourself if you, if you want to. We're going to move on now to the um, dilation uh, from the y-axis. This one gets a little bit complicated um, because, you know, previously it was just, you know, whatever the number, whatever a was, that was the dilation factor. But for this one, it's uh, whatever, um, yeah, it's a little bit different anyway. But let's have a look. So if y equals um, the bracket b times x to the power of n. So you can see that b is in inside the bracket. Even if it was this, um, it would still be the dilation from the x-axis um, so yeah we're, we're gonna have a look at, sorry from the y-axis so we'll have a look at that now so this one um, the language we use for this is that it's dilated by a factor of 1 on b that's where it gets a little bit confusing um, it's uh, yeah it's 1 on 1 divided by b whatever the number is, b is from the y-axis it can also be written as dilated by a factor of 1 on b parallel to the x-axis Again, um, get rid of the textbook language of, you know, in the, y dire in the x direction. It's just not relevant at all. So, again, um, I'm not really concerned whether um, the number, you know, 1 divided by b, whether that's positive or negative at this stage. I'm just looking at whether um, it's, it's bigger than 1, uh, sorry, between 0 and 1, or whether it's bigger than 1. Now, this next bit you don't necessarily have to memorize or remember you just need to be able to do it if, if given a question okay and, and sometimes you can just kind of do it by you know, plugging in some numbers or trying to work it out by yourself but but here it is um, here is the um, the actual understanding of it if it's um, one on B is less than one then we can you know that we would say that the graph is compressed toward the y-axis and therefore looks a little bit skinnier uh, we'll see some examples in a second. If 1 on B is actually greater than 1, the, the graph is stretched away from the y-axis and therefore looks fatter. Okay. Again, you don't need to remember that sort of thing. It can, it can just be a little bit helpful though sometimes. So, the important thing is you're actually able to draw the graph or, or be able to articulate what's going on in this case. So, y equals uh, 2 multiplied by x all to the power of 4, so therefore B is 2. 
and the language we use is that it's been dilated by a factor of 1 on 2 because we have to do 1 divided by b um, from the y-axis in this case so each x value has been multiplied by a half whatever the dilation factor was making it look skinnier or appear skinnier so this value here has been halved to there this value here has been halved to there okay let's have a look at the next one this is where it can get a little bit tricky your fractions work need to get maybe have a, a revamp go back to year seven and remember that sort of stuff so um, this time we've got a square root function graph um, x divided by three so therefore b is one on three okay this would be dilated by a factor of one on one on three which turns into three i'll worry about that other stuff but so the answer is actually three dilated by a factor of three from the y-axis and each x value has been multiplied by three the dilation factor making it look stretched from the x-axis this one looks a little bit different um, the, the, yeah, the dotted line being the old graph and the, the solid line being the, the, the new graph um, it, it does look like it's been dilated from the y-axis uh, from the x-axis actually um, and I guess yeah, there's an argument to say you could actually find the rule like that as well um, because you could take the square root out the front and make it the square root of 1 on 3 multiplied by the square root of x and therefore you could say that the dilation factor is in fact the square root of 1 on 3 from the x-axis However, we're actually going to do it from the y-axis. So each point has been multiplied by a factor of 3. So this point here that was originally there, the x value has been multiplied by 3. And so it's now over here. This point is now over there somewhere. This point is now over there. Okay, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. We move on now to reflections. Again, the variables we're looking at are a and b. Um, and w the first one we're going to look at is um, a y equals a multiplied by x to the power of n and this time a is actually less than zero we're deliberately going to make that and or the, another way you can look at it is you know y equals negative f of x so you can have a graph and then you just put a negative in front of everything so where f of x is the original function the graph has been reflected in the x-axis this one when the negative is out, outside the bracket at the front the new graph will be an upside down mirror image when compared to the original so looking at this first one y equals negative 1 on x squared a in this case is negative 1 so it's a reflection in the x-axis each y value has been multiplied by negative 1 making the graph negative so it's now like a mirror imaged mirror image from uh, the x-axis down there okay the next um, next one we'll look at is when there's a negative in front of here so a again is negative one um, this is a reflection in the x-axis each y value has been multiplied by negative one making the graph negative now this one uh, as we'll see in the next uh, reflection it can actually be reflected on both axes but in this case we're reflecting it from the x-axis this axis along here so everything that was up here is now down here everything that was down here is now up there 